Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Does your warehouse waste time and money managing forklift batteries? Enersys can energize your operations with a customized solution, delivering the power you need while minimizing ownership costs. Enersys starts by analyzing your operations and then selecting from their comprehensive range of battery and charger technologies develops a truly optimized system tailored to your needs. Enersys gives you the power to increase productivity and profitability. See how Enersys puts power in motion for you at Enersys.com. With e-commerce off the charts, many small and growing warehouses are asking, how can I get ahead when my warehouse is barely keeping up? The answer is future-ready warehouse tech from Zebra Technologies. Warehouses can simplify and upgrade all processes, from automated inventory management to hands-free picking, with Zebra's tailored, scalable mobile solutions. They're simple and intuitive. There's never been a better time to upgrade for success with Zebra. How can your warehouse get ahead? The answer's in black and white. Get the answers at zebra.com slash the answer. That's zebra.com slash the answer. Businesses are retooling fulfillment operations from warehouses to omnichannel to meet new demand amid unprecedented labor shortages. 3PLs, retailers, B2B distributors, and others are turning to flexible fulfillment solutions like Six River Systems to adapt and scale. Six River Systems Fulfillment Execution System is an integrated solution that combines intelligent, cloud-based software and automation, including its autonomous mobile robot, AMR, Chuck. No costly or disruptive infrastructure changes, fast and easy associate training, and integrations with other warehouse execution solutions allow operations to meet labor challenges, increase efficiency, and enhance customer engagement. Go to www.sixriver.com to learn more. Go to www.the6river.com to learn more. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. On today's episode, I am going to be joined by James Malley. He is the CEO and co-founder at Packurit, and I think he's also a, a packaging magnet, I think he says on LinkedIn as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about Packurit, how it is that he came to found this technology that's helping with making your packaging more accurate, if you couldn't decipher that from the name. But we're going to talk a little bit about that and why it's so important in the fulfillment warehousing space and other industries as well. So, James, welcome to the show. How are you today? Hey, Kevin. Good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Happy to have you on. I've been interested in, in things that you've been posting on LinkedIn. I think I see you post about how you know people are getting orders delivered to them with incredible amounts of empty space in the box, right? And I think you're trying to address that issue. But before we talk about Packer, why don't you give us a little bit about your, your background and and how that kind of led up to the, the founding of Packer? Sure. So my, my co-founder, who's our CTO, we started working together mm-hmm. in logistics tech in around 2008, 2009. Okay. Uh, and we mostly got brought in by TMS providers when there was a you know some sort of implementation that they didn't want to deal with. They're like, oh, give it to Pat and James. Um, <laughs> and so we did that for a long time. At one point, we even built a fully-fledged web-based shipping system. But we got kind of tired of running around putting out other people's fires <laughs> and wanted to you know head off on our own, seek our own destiny and, and own our own IP. And one of the things around that time that was happening is that the parcel carriers were starting to penalize poor packing Mm -hmm. and some of the shippers that we had done work for. 
had said, you know, there are, you know, there's cartonization solutions out there. Some of them are kind of baked into our WMS, but it, it's yeah. sort of, you know, overly simplistic, can't handle any edge cases. And, and so we, yeah, we, we gave it a shot. <laughs> All right. Very interesting. And, and what, I guess what initially got you interested in logistics? You said you started in, in 2008 in tech, but. Yeah, it's actually kind of a family business. I have a, okay. a family member that has worked a lot with shipping systems, shipping software. And it wasn't, you know, an industry that I, I went to art school for college. Okay. So the idea of, you know, becoming a, a part of the supply chain industry, let alone becoming a huge supply chain nerd was yeah. like nowhere <laughs> on my radar. But that's just kind of how it turned out. Yeah, well, I think it's a case for a lot of people, honestly, in the supply chain space. You don't necessarily think that we're, we're going to go that route. I know I didn't think I was going to go that route. And, you know, we talk about supply chain nerd. I mean, I got a podcast about warehousing. So, um, you know, it, it's a very interesting to to see that. And, you know, obviously there's tons of growth and, and opportunity to to solve a lot of problems, especially like this packaging one that you guys are solving. So, so tell us a little bit about Packurid and, and what it is that it actually does. Sure. So Packurid's an API mm-hmm. that retailers and 3PLs use to determine the best way of packing any given parcel shipment. Okay. You know, we kind of built it in the beginning. We were thinking, all right, we, we can go deep on the math on this. Mm-hmm. We don't need to, you know, deal with customers directly. We'll just make it so powerful and flexible that any, you know, any TMS company or, you know, WMS company could just plug it in and white label it, et cetera. Mm-hmm. What kind of ended up happening is that we've found that shippers, especially larger shippers, have a lot of customization going on in their, in their software. And so we yeah. ended up working with them directly, mostly. Okay, interesting. And so, so now this will plug in, and then it, it'll tell you basically how to package it. That's right. Yeah. In the in the API request, a shipper will send over you know item dimensions, pretty much all the information about the order, mm-hmm. uh, including you know even a, a rate table, other kinds of costs that they want to, the algorithm to consider, and then we send back a packing list with an image of the box or, or boxes that need to be packed in a certain way. Hmm. Interesting. And, and so, I mean, in that sense, too, because, you know, a lot of times, I guess you, as especially in like a, a sort of a 3PL environment, too, you're getting in different types of products and, you know, from different customers and different shapes and sizes. I mean, you generally have kind of a mix of different boxes that can kind of fit in that sense. So, so will the the API also kind of give you a recommendation on on box size like you know maybe you should be utilizing this type of box size instead of this one that you have in stock absolutely and i guess the you know the first version of packurate was really more concerned with just minimizing cubic volume Mm -hmm. and then we started to incorporate you know dimensional weight how do we avoid that and then we kind of had this discovery that we could actually find some sort of counterintuitive savings by incorporating full carrier rate tables hmm. where there's all kinds of weird break points for you know depending on if you're shipping to across the country or or next door or on a plane the packing solution is different even for us one carrier so all of that's kind of considered and then obviously there's business rules three pls with a lot of you know customers often have branded boxes so we have to account right. for that and there, there's a lot that goes into every decision Mm, very interesting and and so you know in that sense obviously this is a a a big problem right where you know i see the the post that you put up you know where that's a picture and you know it's like a a tiny little thing and it's in this like big box with tons of open space right so so tell us a little bit about the problem there and you know why is that such a problem and you know why has it not necessarily been fully addressed in in the past yeah i i think the you know it's always kind of been a problem since you know e-commerce began but the pain was not really acute until the pandemic hit that's when you know transportation costs started to spike 
even corrugate costs, like the cost of your actual cartons was just something yeah. that shippers used to consider as like the cost of doing business. But now it's like, oh, wait a second. This is a, this is a serious cost we have to account for. So that's, that's probably why this is suddenly like a hot topic. In, ter- in terms of, I think you're referencing some of the posts of we found on social media of people complaining yes, about yeah. the tiny items in the big boxes. It, it's, it's something we can kind of all relate to, um, mm-hmm. you know, drowning in air pillows and corrugate, having to haul it out when you ordered a toothbrush. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and it, it's, it's interesting because it's, you know, we talk to a lot of marketing folks and this is traditionally, you know, the post-purchase experience is something that's kind of vexing to them because they don't have a lot of say over operations often. Mm. And so, you know, the most visible real life part of the buying experience that, you know, in 2022 is when that box shows up in your door. And so, you know, m- we see marketing kind of pleading with the operations side to be like, guys, this is not good. These these people are posting bad packing jobs on social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you, you go on Reddit, but there's a like a thriving community now that popped up this year. Really? Just posting pic- these pictures. So from a, <laughs> you know, from a cost and from a customer experience standpoint, it's something's changed in the last, you know, six to 12 months. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting because even I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago and they were talking about it as well. And they were saying, you know, it's like, you know, I'm getting all these deliveries because, you know, I need stuff and there's the convenience of ordering them. But he's like, I'm just realizing that, you know, I'm spending so much time of my week, like just like collapsing boxes for my recycling. It's a little crazy. And he's like, I'm, now I'm thinking about, you know, all this, this space and cardboard that's, that's piling up. And, you know, I'm trying to consolidate my orders more than I would in the past. So, so I think it's something that's definitely getting more into the the conscious of the consumer and you know especially as we're ordering more things online and depending on that convenience and, and i i think you have a really interesting point there about the marketing side and the operation side like having sort of a disconnect in a sense right because i think you know the operation side it's just like you know it's always like all right go 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 like get the order out get the order out you know put it in the box slap the label on it put it on the truck right and you know the marketing side obviously wants to deliver that experience and i think you know like you said in 2022 i mean you know that is turning into what would you know typically be the the retail experience right in the store like when you get that package on your your porch like that's the kind of the the retail experience in a sense because you're not going into the store and experiencing that so what type of benefits are, are you seeing companies get from implementing pack your well it kind of depends on what they're after i mean 3pls they tend to use our api to optimize for you know labor so mm-hmm. speed things up because they have all these metrics about like one second saved on packing equals x or y But most e-commerce shippers, we see, you know, an average of 14% reduction in cubic volume, Mm. which translates to actually a one-to-one reduction in the number of floor-loaded trailers Mm. that they need. And, you know, around anywhere between 6 and 20% reduction in shipping costs. Mm. Yeah. So it could be pretty big. I mean, some of our larger customers, just by calling this API you know, real quick, they're saving like 1.8 million, I believe, a year on shipping alone, oh, wow. mm. and that's not including the corrugate reduction. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a, a good savings, and and I could see it too because even mm-hmm. you know, seeing how this this space it adds up. Like, you know, you may look at one box, and you know, there's a little bit of, of void space in there that's that's open, and you think like, well, it's not much. But then when you kind of extrapolate that and, and add it all together over a, a full truck, I mean, you're talking tons of just air in that truck, basically that you're. Yeah you're moving right so so it's not only from the the shipping savings by reducing probably the amount of trucks that you need to to move those products and then also the the cost of shipping the item as well from the dimensional side but also from you know a sustainability side as well so i mean are you, are you seeing people tap into it because of the the greener or sustainable side as well we'll be back after a quick break 
You hear a lot about supply chains these days, because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Absolutely. The kind of special thing about this problem set Mm -hmm. is that cost and you know emissions are basically the same are they Mm -hmm. they're they're not just linked but they're the same because you're effectively paying for carbon to be emitted and carrier rates are structured in a way that the more polluting modes are Mm -hmm. a commensurate amount more expensive so it's one of those kind of like have your cake and eat it too sort of things where you know, we encounter people that are super passionate about the sustainability side of things and that's what they care about. But then because there's also this massive cost savings associated with it, they can sell it internally without necessarily having to, you know, plead uh, Mm -hmm. with, with folks that are more concerned about the margins. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a a good thing because, you know, a lot of times we, in a, a business mindset, I think, you know, sometimes we think about, you know, more sustainable options and, you know, people get scared because it's going to cost more money. Right. And, you know, how are we going to make up for that additional cost? But in in this sense, like you're saying, you know, it's, it's reducing cost actually. And it, it's also helping the, the environment in that sense. And, you know, I, I think it makes a lot of sense and, you know, it's really interesting to see kind of how this problem is being addressed through, through Packurate. So, so if, if you're going to start to use Packurate, what does an implementation look like? How does that work? Typically, we'll, you know, we'll meet with you and try to understand what your business requirements are, you know, item rules, fragility, mm-hmm. if items can be stacked, nested, rolled, all that kind of good stuff. We'll try to get a sense of your costs. So what's your corrugate cost? What, what carriers do you use? What, you know, what service types? And then we'll help you figure out how to call the API in such a way that it's really optimizing your fulfillment costs. I'd say maybe a third to a half of our customers we've never actually spoken to because our API is just open. Um, oh, interesting. And they just come on and start using it. It's a pretty relaxing day for our sales team when <laughs> you know somebody gets in touch and they demo the implementation back to them. They're like, well, okay, it looks great. What do you want from us? Yeah, have a good day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. And and so, I mean, easy to use, it sounds like, and obviously an easy implementation is, is a great thing for, for big time savings. So, you know, I think that the idea of addressing this and, and doing this is, is a really great thing. And I think that it's this simplified solution it makes a lot of sense. And it, it's going to be helpful for a lot of small to medium sized businesses as well who can't necessarily invest in you know, bigger type automation things as doing like right size packaging and stuff like that. This is kind of a, an easier way to, to get into that and, you know, not have to have like any heavy infrastructure investment or anything like that. And I think that's a, a great thing. And the more tools that we have like that can really help smaller, medium sized businesses kind of keep up and, and make sure that they're, you know, servicing their customers the way the customers want to be serviced, but also, you know, not getting drowned out and, and lost by some of the, the bigger players in the distribution fulfillment space, right? So very interesting stuff. And so now tell us a little bit about kind of the, the next phases of, of Packurate. And I think you have a, some type of new solution coming out as well. Yes, I'm giving you an exclusive on this, actually, Kevin. Exclusive, so. exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> I need a, a sound clip for that, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. We have a, a new technology that we call Pack Simulate, and it's actually mm. using our, our engine in a different way. We're able to kind of leverage it as a modeling tool. And mm. another kind of boring problem that has, like, high impact where we're actually able to look at you know, a ton of shipping data, all, you know, your, your specific costs, 
and tell you exactly which carton sizes you should use in your distribution centers and mm. or stores. It's it's funny. It, it probably has like a a third of the impact of using the API, but it's super, it's even easier because it's just a spreadsheet. You drop really? it in and let the engine do its thing. So we're, we're really excited about it because it's so light lift compared to mm. the impact it can have. Mm. Interesting. So, so I mean, pack it as it is now basically is, is just taking your, the existing packaging you use and, and recommending what it is versus now pack simulate will kind of recommend what packaging you should be getting. Exactly. Yeah. This is more of like an analysis play, but it's mm. taking the, you know, our kind of thesis about how to tackle this problem where you're yeah. incorporating a whole lot of disparate costs and using that to kind of algorithmically make the decision. And it's been interesting, like the, you know, early adopters, most of them are coming from, you know, packaging providers that sent them mm-hmm. our way because this, this kind of problem is traditionally like a consulting it problem yeah. where you do like kind of averages of averages, make sure that there's no single skew that's, that can't fit in a box and then, you know, you're good to go. Yeah. But you know, the more of these we do and the more people we onboard onto it, there's much like the cartonization opportunity. It's just, there's a huge opportunity there for, for people to lower their costs and emissions. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great because even, you know, as you're, you're saying there, like, you know, we just want to make sure that, you know, we have a box for every skew to, to fit in. Sometimes that works out to be like, you have this, you're like smallest box, it's just like way too big for like your smallest items. I mean, it fits in there, right? But, but you could have like a better option that you know. Obviously, as we've talked about here, could could save you a lot of money. So, so I, I mean, with the pack simulator, you, you mentioned it's basically just a, a spreadsheet. So, is it just something like you're going to be able to to download, or how does that work? Yeah, well, you need to export basically shipping history from whatever your system of record mm, is. Okay and then drop it into an interface and it actually based on your requirements i mean it's another one where it sounds like a simpler problem to solve than it actually is you know it may be that there's a minimum size because of you know what's conveyable there's all kinds of business rules that we have to consider but once you have that established you can really just drop in that historical record of shipping and then compare different scenarios so here's the you know the greenest choice if you're willing to have you know three more boxes than you currently do here's that choice that saves you you know xyz on on shipping and labor so it it goes much deeper into this problem uh, Mm -hmm. than i think anybody else has before and so we're we're pretty excited about it interesting interesting yeah yeah and i think that's great because you know like you said you're going deeper and you're peeling back that that layer a little further and i think where we're at with you know fulfillment and and the demand for for e-commerce fulfillment as well i think we need to go as as deep as possible in order to to make it as efficient and and effective as possible not only from a business standpoint but also from a sustainability standpoint as we we talked about here too as well and and just the overall customer experience so so very interesting stuff about Packurate and definitely enjoyed hearing about it and you know, the ease of use is certainly very attractive. And I, I think that's a, a great thing to make it simple for companies to be able to, to kind of bolt this on in a sense and, and be able to get better packaging results and not only for, you know, their, their cost, but also for the, the customer experience as well. So, so very interesting stuff, James, and I, I appreciate you coming on the show and, and talking about Packurate. If people are interested in learning more about Packurate and, and getting the API and setting it up themselves, it sounds it's easy enough to do. How can they do that? They can go to Packurate.io. It's like the word accurate with a P in front of it. Um, <laughs> there's plenty of information there. I'm also happy to talk. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Find me on LinkedIn, James Malley, or on Twitter. My handle's at Mr. Malley. So, oh. so stop by and say hi. All right, great. And we'll put all that information at thenewwarehouse.com as well. So, James, thank you once again for your time on the show today. You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com.
Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from the new warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for the new warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.